Hi, I'm Philip with MSI. We're here at SC25 in St. Louis, Missouri. So it's all about supercomputers. It is, absolutely. It's a high performance competing show. We've got a lot of stuff on display here. Uh, MSI has been in business since the 80s. A lot of people know us for consumer laptops and graphics cards. MSI has actually been making servers since 2001. So we've got nearly 25 years of server experience now. So we've got, uh, we've been expanding into the server channel market and uh, we've got a lot of interesting, exciting stuff on display. So this here is a RTX Pro 6000 server. It's based off of an NVIDIA reference architecture known as NVIDIA MGX, and the MGX spec is a standard spec from NVIDIA, so they've already done the work to figure out the, uh, the, the balance of the system, the thermals, and so you can be guaranteed that the performance is what you expect it to be. Um, these are PCI Express accelerators, so there are cards like the H200 NVL, the RTX Pro 6000s, and what's interesting that I like about this one is this is using the NVIDIA CX8 architecture. So not only do you have the eight RTX Pros on it, you also have eight 400 gigabit ethernet ports on the back there using QSOPs. So, so is it uh, what, some of the higher performance GPUs? Yeah, these are data center class cards known as the RTX Pro 6000. And uh, the RTX Pro 6000 Black Hole Server Edition. It is going crazier the name of here, but it's it's a long name. But it's uh, it's a 600 watt accelerator and is optimized for things like maybe light training or fine tuning. But in my eyes, it's an inference card. You run your language model on it, you do your inference on this, and you load eight of them up. It's about a seven or eight thousand watt server, so your rack car budget is going to be pretty dense. You're <laughs> looking at 40, 50 k, uh, thousand watts, 40, 50 k for your rack power budget. But uh, so you can do it. Just load it up. And, and uh, so who's the potential customer for this product? Enterprise customers, so customers who are not, if you're, if you're running your own language models and, and doing production inference, this is the type of server you're going to be running it on. And, and uh, so, so this area here is about GPU servers? Yeah, and so the, these are well known at this point, uh, 8 GPU servers, 4 GPU servers. We have it available with both Intel processors and AMD processors. So no matter what uh, preference you have in terms of CPU, the host CPU, we've got options available. And this is something that's new. This is the NVIDIA GB300 workstation platform. We call it the CT60S8060. It is a Grace Blackwell. So it's not using an x86 processor, it is using a NVIDIA Grace ARM it's CPU. It's ARM. Yeah, it is ARM. So, so it's, it's NVIDIA, a very big ARM chips. It is, and the memory. So this one is the ARM? The, this is the ARM CPU on the left. And this is the GPU? And this is the memory. This is a new form factor called uh, SOCAM. It's LPDDR5, not standard DDR5, so low power DDR5 memory. And the okay. chip to the right is the Blackwell B300 GPU, and that has HBM. Yeah. And they're all on one board? It is What's one board. What's the advantage board. of doing it like this? This does something that no previous workstation could do. It has NVLink between the processor and the <laughs> GPU. So it's one unified memory, uh, memory chunk. The GPU can access the LPDDR5 coming off the CPU. And that way, this system has 768 gigabytes of combined memory between the two. It sounds like a lot. It is, yeah. I'm trying to remember the exact specs. Uh, don't listen to what I'm saying. Look at the spec. It's right. the, the written spec is correct. The CPU has 496 gigabytes of LPDDR5X, and the GPU has 288 gigabytes of HBM3E. And because of NVLink, the GPU has access to all of it. So it's something like 768 gigabytes, somewhere in that neighborhood for, uh, for combined memory space. So what this does, unless you run a massive uh, language model locally, this is a development workstation. So where previously you would have a GPU server in the cloud or somewhere in the server, uh, a server rack somewhere, you put this next to your desk. It's a 1600 watt workstation. It's a lot of power, you need a circuit breaker for it, but this lets you run it locally so you can do your Does it cost tens of thousands of dollars? NVIDIA has not disclosed pricing yet, so it's still and, in uh, So, So what would you connect here on the, on the PCI slots? That's because be you have the GPU already on the, on the motherboard. These don't have graphical output. This will need a graphics card of some sort. It doesn't need to be a, a huge graphics card. In fact, you prefer it's a lower power one. Just for like a quad loading on the display. Card. You can for display output, yes. 
because your workstation would have two or three monitors most likely if you're you know if you're working on it so that's the reason you would have a big desktop tower like this correct. otherwise you don't need to because it could be just correct. a flat thing correct this will be water cooled so this is going to be releasing in q1 of next year so it's the system this will be a water cooled system it's going to have uh, radiators and now the pump is going to be an internal uh, closed loop system it's designed to be quiet that's another advantage of this and all these are 1600 watts it's going to be a quiet 1600 watts um, it's got four M.2 ports for local storage for NVMe. So you and can put uh, four times eight terabytes? Yeah, three and number four is up here. And so you got four NVMe M.2 ports for local storage. You can put Wi-Fi on it. Also, the other, the other cool thing about this is it's got an NVIDIA CX-8. This has two 400 gigabit network ports on it. So this workstation has 800 gigabits total throughput of networking on the back. 800 gigabits? 800 gigabits. <laughs> throughput. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, is it the most powerful desktop in the world? It does things that no other workstation can do. We've had four GPU workstations in the past where you load up four big graphics cards. There were four separate graphics cards where it was, each card had its own memory. They didn't share memory together. And each card had, you know, if you look at like an RTX 5090, for example, it's 32 gigabytes. You look at like an RTX Pro 6000 workstation edition, uh, 96 gigabytes. This thing will give you one memory domain of like 768 in that neighborhood. So you can run one large language model that you couldn't do on a previous workstation. What's the performance of this, this big chip here? That the is GPU? A, that is a B300 Blackwell it's GPU. It's a beast. It's a B300. B300. So, yeah, it's the same, same GPU technology that goes into like the big HGX systems. And that's actually another selling point for this is the development work you do on this translates directly to the big HGX platforms you want on the cloud. So you do your development for this, and then once your code so is native. ready, you just push it to the cloud. It runs on the big iron out in the out in the cloud. Nice. So it's the same. So same how many people are waiting for this? A lot of them. And yeah. if you walk around here, mm -hmm. um, we have uh, so little, people if they want to have a small compact. Uh, what's the performance in these little ones there? So these are the little cousin of the platform here. Nvidia calls this the GB three hundred. Grace Blackwell 300. This is known as the GB10 or the GGX Spark. We call it the MSI Edge Expert. This is a much lower power. Uh, this one is, I don't remember off the top of my head, but it's in the hundreds of watts range, I believe. But it is where this one is 700 plus gigabytes of co uh, combined memory. This one is 128 gigabytes. Uh, this is also significantly cheaper. And uh, this is this also uses a Grace processor. This is not an x86 CPU. This is a Grace ARM CPU from NVIDIA. And uh, with the, Black the ARM Will. CPU that's in here, mm -hmm. the Blackwell. And honestly, yes. Uh, compared to the CPU that's there. Yes. What would you say? Less memory, significantly less memory. So this is the the, the Blackwell, and this has 288 gigabytes of HBM memory. This one has 120 gigabytes of LP DDR5X. Between but it's, the, they're both the, 72 the core ARM cores. This is a 20 core, 20 ARM cores. 20 core. Yeah. So this is 20 and this 72. Yeah. It's it's physically smaller and it's also electrically smaller. <laughs> it's less cores, smaller GPU. Nice. Do you think some uh, some developers and uh, AI supercomputing space are going to have a bunch of these and a bunch of those in an office? I believe for different so. Desktops. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense to do that because again, you have local access to a local control. It's just a you know, it's a workstation. It's at your desk. You know, it's not in the it's not in the data center. So you do local development based off of it. And and so you could push it directly over to the yeah. to the data center, like yeah. something like this. So this is going to be this is a we're, we're switching topics here. This is not a GPU rack, but uh, you know, it, it's. The GP models you run on those workstations will run in a rack server. Uh, this here is, like I said, a, a different, uh, different thing. This is a uh, just a, a data center rack based off of OCP Open Rack. This is what's known as an ORV3 rack. It's a 21-inch rack. The rack architecture that you think of when you think of a server rack is most likely a 19-inch EIA rack. Uh, the 21-inch rack specification has been around for I don't know a decade at this point. Uh, it came from OCP. We're on open rack v3 at this point it uses a 48 volt power distribution bar so this is a, this right here there's no power supplies in these servers there is a power shelf so at the bottom of the rack down here there is all the power supplies live at the rack level it outputs dc power to this bus bar and then it does dc distribution to all the servers and the advantage to that is once you start populating racks especially as the power budgets climb you start 
when you're using standard servers, you have a lot of power distribution units. I've seen racks with six PDUs. We start having PDUs hanging out the back of the rack. There's no space for it. So as you start climbing north to 17 kilowatts or so, power distribution is greatly simplified by using a bus bar design. So these aren't GPU racks. These are for us uh, data center racks for web servers, application servers. Uh, in right. particular, this is, these are single socket turn servers. And I'll show you right here, this is what's in that rack. And you can see um, it's 48 volt DC coming off the bus bar. There are quarter brick power modules here, which convert from 48 volt DC to 12 volt DC for the server itself. Um, so use a, a standard motherboard like a standard server. They just don't have power supplies in the, in the chassis. And uh, you can see that these things are really airflow optimized also. Um, this one in, in 21 inch has a good amount of storage. Um, these are 19 inch versions of them. And this, I'm, I'm really happy about this. This is what's known as an EVAC heat sink or extended volume air cooling. Basically, it's just a large air cooler. Um, we've got an off-road map skew of this with no storage and no PCI Express slot. Just the OCP NIC, wide open vent on the front. We actually measured 17 watts of fan power per node with a 500 watt processor on it. So it's, it's very airflow optimized. Um, and who are the customers for those? Data centers, uh, cloud service providers, uh, web hosting. Basically, if you're hosting a website or application, you don't need a lot of expansion. It's just cores in a rack, and that's what we call these core compute. They're, they're compute servers. And uh, we have it with AMD. We have it with Intel, both with the, uh, the AP socket, the Xeon 6900, also with the SP socket with the Xeon 6700. Um, we can air cool up to 500 watts very comfortably with a chassis design for it. And, um, uh, are you planning to do more and more? You can see another example also, uh, of an EVAC air cooler here with our 2U chassis. Uh, we have a very large air cooler on this as well, so this has very easy 500 watt air cooling as well. You can see that a standard heat sink just sits on the CPU socket where the, the EVAC, the extended volume air cooling, extends right, sits right in front of the fans where the static pressure is the highest. Um, you get a lot of airflow through that, so you have a very high power processor with the lowest possible fan power consumption. Are you, are you also planning to do more and more ARM-based uh, solutions like the not really the Blackwell uh, um, that you showed before? It really the proliferation of ARM CPU cores has been mostly in the hyperscale space. In the enterprise, I have seen absolutely zero demand for ARM CPUs so far. Customers have played with it and kind of kicked the tires, but I haven't seen any volume plays with that. So we are focused on Intel and AMD CPUs. Um, I should hedge that a little bit. The NVIDIA processors, they, I have some examples of ARM CPUs over there, but that's because NVIDIA is driving it. So it's- But uh, you said that there's a big demand. There's people are waiting for those desktops, huh? Um, yeah, it's, I, historically I haven't seen any interest in ARM, so, but we will, the market changes, so I, I should, I, I don't mean to waffle, but I, we, we see more interest in it, I and mean, it's gonna be customer driven. As customers start asking us for it, we'll start developing more in that direction. And here in the world, there's a bunch of the motherboards. Uh, yes, so these are those. GCMHS host processor modules. We have a building block approach here for our server architecture. These are more standard form factors, ACX, this is an OCP NIC, um, this is just a bog standard uh, CEB board, very, very similar to ATX. You can just take this and put it into a chassis, use the standard ATX power. These are a OCP specification known as DCMHS, or Data Center Host Processor Module, or uh, Modular Hardware System, sorry. Um, this is what's known as a DNO Type 2 Host Processor Module. This is based off the Xeon 6900. This is based off the Xeon 6700. This is the SP socket. And this is the AMD Turin platform, Epic 9005. You'll notice all three are the exact same dimensions. So we can do one chassis and we can support any CPU, whatever you want to put into it, we have it. And we're carrying this forward with next generation with the new CPUs coming, you know, next generation. Same placement so we can reuse our same chassis. So if you design a system now, you can drop in next generation CPUs very easily. So what would you say is MSI's uh, market share uh, in the, in the supercomputing space or uh, the, all the stuff that we're talking about? We're new in the HPC space and so we are growing. And so the platforms we have on display now are doing very well for us. 
especially with the RTX Pro 6000 Black Hole Server Edition. That's been a tremendous card, great card, and uh, doing a lot of inference with it. And it's just, it fits a price point that's significantly lower than the big Iron HTX servers have been. So it's, uh, we're, we're, we're starting out now and it's doing really well for us. And it's big activity in this industry. Huge amount Sometimes of Sometimes some people just need a lot of those things. Yeah, yeah. And uh, sometimes it's hard to get them. You need to wait. You're talking about supply? Yeah, some of the chips are like, in, I think can take the months. component shortages across the industry are well documented at this point. <laughs> I don't need to tell anybody what's going on with memory right now. So uh, it's going to be it's going to be fun across the industry getting components. HDMI technology powers the global ecosystem of connected devices, enabling advanced displays that deliver immersive visuals and sound across entertainment, professional, and everyday applications. As the preferred technology for digital AV connectivity, HDMI technology and the features and benefits it enables links billions of products worldwide from HDTVs, set-top boxes, and laptops to gaming consoles, projectors, and audio-video receivers. It provides the reliable, high-bandwidth connectivity needed for today's ultra-high-definition video, lifelike color accuracy, and immersive sound formats. HDMI technology drives innovation across industries, including digital signage, medical imaging, education, and esports. With unmatched performance, interoperability, and scalability, HDMI technology continues to define how content is created, shared, and enjoyed around the world.